Hi, this is Bob Sorrentino from Italian Roots and Genealogy, and I'm here today with Pat Benincasa, and we're going to talk about uh, her family and her roots. So welcome, Pat. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Bob. I'm delighted to be here. All uh, things Italian. Absolutely. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, and so where, where are you located? Well, I live in St. Paul, Minnesota, but most of my family, when they came to this country, uh, migrated around the Detroit area in Michigan. Oh, okay. So you're the first Italian from Michigan so far. So I've, I've had uh, Illinois, and I've had Ohio, and I've had Pennsylvania. So okay. this should be fun. This should be good. Uh, so my first question to you is, you know, when and why did you start researching the family? I think like most of us Italians, we grow up with all these stories. Uncle so-and-so, grandpa did this, but we get to a certain age and we begin to want to know more. And um, for me, it started with my cousin, Helen Selfie Gorday, gave me a book of burned love poems written in the 1890s. And uh, she said, Patty, take this. And it was a burn. So I translated the book of these Italian love poems. I thought my family's from Southern Italy, which is really uh, at that time was highly illiterate. And here my grandfather's walking around with a book of poems and it's burned. So I thought I got to know more. And that's what's well, you know how this goes when you start doing genealogy research. <laughs> It's like one thing leads to another and you go all Hansel and Gretel and you start following those breadcrumbs and just worlds open up. And that's really how it started. So, so where in Italy is the family from? My family, almost all of them, Bob, are from a little village called Mangone and it's about 10 miles south of Cosenza. So we are the uh, hardheads, the Calabresi. <laughs> Well, I have a little Calabrese in me, so. All right, then. <laughs> so I understand. And my wife says I'm a hothead, so that, you know, ah, I guess you that qualify. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, she's she's half Sicilian and half Puerto Rican, so I wow. watch my step. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> uh, so now, do you know, you know, I, you know, we all assume that they came because things weren't good there, but do you know why they came and why they went to Michigan? Yes, well... Uh, my grandfather, the Benincasa side, they immigrated through Canada. And um, my mother's side emigrated through Ellis Island. And so when I tracked my grandfather's history, I could see his, he and his brother Antonio in 1904, they started coming over uh, to, uh, to Canada, to Vancouver. They followed where other people were. So if there were people in the village that had jobs there, that's where they would go. And I also thought, you know, if they came over, they stayed. For some reason, I thought when people emigrated back then, they would just leave Italy and stay forever in their new country. And I'm finding out these people went back and forth a lot. So my grandfather went back and forth to Mangon and to uh, Ontario. And uh, he married my grandmother, uh, Gaetana Morrow. And uh, two months later, he and his brother went back to Canada. And my grandfather worked on the Welland Canal. And that was a huge project on Ontario. And when I did the research, I found that they hired many, many Italians. And there's this whole world of information, Bob, that was just opening up. Also, my, my grandfather had a prosthetic left hand. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to know, how did he lose his left hand? Come to find out, he lost it at the Welland Canal. And wow. then I find, it's really interesting yeah, because yeah. then I start doing the research how in Canada they were hiring all these Southern Italian immigrants. And often they wouldn't even record their name. They'd give them a number on the job site. And they gave them the most dangerous jobs, planting explosives, uh, digging in areas that had no business for someone to even go in there. And many of them uh, were maimed or lost their lives. But they did, some of them, they didn't even know their names. So all of a sudden, this world opens up like what my grandfather went through. And in the meantime, my grandmother is holding the fort down like many of those Italian women when their men went off to, uh, to the States or Argentina, wherever they went, 
uh, they were there raising the family and uh, taking care of everything. So now do you, do you know or do you think that he was recruited? Because, you know, one of the interviews I, I did just a, you know, a few weeks ago um, where they, they talked about the Padrone and, and, you know, in 1870 yes. and going over there and recruiting people and bringing them here. And uh, they originally were supposed to go to Argentina and then they just left them in New York City. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so do you know if he was recruited or? From what I tracked down, I could not find a padroni. I could not find that. But instead, it was uh, people from Mangon, the guys that went ahead, said, hey, you got to come here. This mm -hmm. is, you can get paid for doing this work. It's great money. You know, that kind of thing. So they didn't need a padron. They just followed uh, nephews or uh, cousins to the work site. That's what I could see. Yeah. So... So then, but then he found that they, he found his way to the United States. So how did they well, come to the U.S.? So my, my grandfather and my grandmother, uh, eventually he had her come over to Canada and, um, they lived in Canada. And then my dad, uh, during World War II, he tried to join the armed services in the States. They wouldn't have him. He was Canadian and mm. an Italian surname. He got pissed. Bob, I can't say it any other way. So he went to Canada and he joined the first regiment of the Canadian paratroopers, the very first regiment. And so uh, he served for a year and he broke his nose jumping out of airplanes. So after a year as a Canadian paratrooper, uh, he was, you know, he came out and he married my mother and they were in the States. And then eventually in the 50s, they brought my uh, grandparents from Canada into the United States. They got them uh, the papers. So not, they immigrated twice. They were Canadian citizens and then they became American citizens. Yeah, so that, you know, what's interesting about that, two things. One is my grandparents, um, I believe that they had planned to go back. Um, mm. And the reason they came was my grandfather was in the Libyan War in 1911. Yep. And, um, 1914 rolled around, World War I starts, and my grandmother, according to the stories I heard, my grandmother said, you're not going to war again, we're going to go to America. Mm. Uh, now, her brother was here. Okay. Um, okay. And so I believe they were going to go back because they left my uncle, my oldest uncle, in Italy with his grandparents. Mm. Well, they never went back. They started having their family here. Yep. Yep. Uh, when he wanted to come, finally, um, he was 18 and he had to go in the service in Italy. Oh. It was bef but it was before World War II. He was, he was the oldest uncle. And um, he served in, in the army. Uh, he wound up getting married. He started having a family. World War II breaks yep. out now. Yep. Uh, he didn't have to go in the service because by then I think he had, he had at least three children. Okay. Uh, so he didn't have to go in the Italian army, luckily for mm. him. Uh, but when he came, when wanted to come in the, in 1950, he couldn't because of the because of the um, the immigration laws. That's right. They changed. Yeah. yeah. And even though his four brothers, he had four brothers serve in World War II, all 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 American citizens. Yep. Um, he couldn't come to the States. He had to go to Canada and spend five years in Toronto. Yep. And then finally yep. came, I think, in 54, 55. You know, when we think about family, I, I try to put, when I was doing genealogy, what, one of the things I tried not to do was look at, a, look at them through my, modern eyes. So for my yeah. grandmother, tilling the soil, raising three babies, I could have thought of her as being victimized, oh, the injustice of it all. But those women didn't think like that. They, they just knew they were going to take care of the home. They were going to take care of their babies. They were waiting for their men to contact them. So they knew when to go over. And I try to put myself in that position. I mean, how scary it must have been. Uh, you know, they're going to a country that they don't speak the language. They don't know. And when she brought her, her children or three children on board this ship, she's on, she's down in steerage and they're listening to all these different languages, all these people crowded together. I mean, I think about their courage a lot. 
Bob. Well, yeah, and and you know, you know, you think about it, they're from these little towns. Yeah, they've never been probably two miles from the town. Yeah, uh, and here they are, like you said, three children. The husband says, "Come." Yeah, and they have to get the donkey or whatever <laughs> to get to the next town to get to the next. They finally get to Naples. Yep, and get on, like I said, get on a boat and go, and yeah. leave everything you know behind yeah. you. Sometimes when I get scared about making a change or doing something, I think about my ancestors a lot. I, I think a day doesn't pass. I don't feel them inside of me, really. And so sometimes I think, oh, my God, you guys went through that, and I'm whining about this. And I kinda, <laughs> it kind of helps me put it in perspective, you know? Uh, I know. My, my daughter, is a, she's a, a nurse in Texas. A, she's a, a travel nurse now. And um, uh, my wife is constantly... She didn't call. She get to work. She didn't get to work. <laughs> Don't worry about it. She's fine. You know, she'll call you. Or she'll, and and she's the same way. If she calls us and we're out, or, you know, we don't answer. Where were you guys? You yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah. And you know, like you said, you think about these these people. There was there was no tell. There wasn't even telephone to be able no. to contact them. Nothing. No, nothing. Yeah, yeah. So when I think about Mangon, I I did go there. I had to go to the village where my parents were born. I'm a first generation American. So it was really, it felt incomplete. I, I just needed to know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in college at the time, a million years ago. So me and a friend backpacked for five weeks in Italy. I had just taken an eight hour Italian immersive language class. And I took a, an intense uh, Italian Renaissance class. Bob, that's all I needed, really. You know, the language and art. I'm an artist. So, of course, ah, yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> so uh, a friend, I said to a friend, you want to go backpacking through Italy? And she said, yeah, let's do, you know, college kids are. So we backpacked for five weeks and I mapped out the entire trip off to all the artworks, the paintings, the sculptures, the palazzos. I just studied everything. It was like a family reunion in and of itself art wise. But we take the train down to Mangon. So we're, we're leaving these sophisticated cities <laughs> on this train going way down south. And so we come to this village. It's like midday. And we have these backpacks. We're to Americana, right? So mm -hmm. we're walking on the street and all the doors are closed. And I'm thinking, Jesus, where is everybody? And this woman walks towards me and I gasp. I thought, boy, she looks just like my grandmother. I can't believe this. And so... <laughs> I walk up to her and I say in Italian, I'm the daughter of Idu Rizzuto and Francesco Benincasa. Bob, the doors fly open. People mm. are coming out. And next thing, you know, a lot of this and a lot of, you know, <laughs> and the, the, the cheeks, the hugging. So then we have to go from house to house. So my friend Barb and I say, we go to these houses and what do they do? They bring out stock, the brandy. Each house, they poured half glass of stock Salut, salut. We go to the next house. Salut, salut. Five houses down, across the street, <laughs> five houses back. Now, I'm a small, I'm five foot two. And that's a lot of, a lot of salut, <laughs> you know, a lot of stock. <laughs> so that was like the beginning of this incredible uh, trip. And the villages were like that uh, mud hut whitewash. And I stayed with my Zia Katerina, my grandmother's sister. And now, we're American kids in our 20s. Now, what do you know at 20, really? Yeah. I'm... And so I'm thinking we're going to stay at her house, you know, and I'm thinking a kitchen full of, you know. We go in, and she has a brazier for heat. I mean, it's that basic. Mm -hmm. And then she said, tomorrow we're going to go to the bakery. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, donuts and this and that. So we get up, we go to the bakery. It's a whitewashed building with a big oven in the middle. That's the bakery. So it was extra. They brought out the best food, suprasata, sausage, everything they owned. And it's very poor. They gave us the best of everything. And then uh, I went to the house where my dad was born. And this 95-year-old man jumps up, fedora in, on his head. And he says, I'm Jimmy Benincasa. I speak five languages. I'm happy you're here. <laughs> and he sits back down. <laughs> you know? These people had the, they had their own intelligence. So, they were so oh. did, did they know, did, now did they know about 
the family in Canada or the U.S.? I mean, they did. So they, they knew. Did. Yeah. They knew. But, you know, somehow they separated. Like, my parents were yeah. the youngest of each family. And, Bob, quite frankly, they Americanized. They mm. Americanized yeah. as much as they could. So when I'd leave them and go to my relatives, going to them was like being back in the old country. Sit, we would sit under grape arbors, broken English, half Italian. It was really Italy. Then I go back home to my Americanized parents. And so it was really an interesting way because I, I, I always felt like an immigrant, honest to God. And I, I had to remind myself I'm an American. So as a little kid, I'd go to friends' houses, Americans, and they'd bring food to eat. And I think, whoa, these Americans are strange. And then I said, wait a minute, <laughs> I'm an American, you know, because we were steeped in that culture. We played yeah, with our cousins. Yeah. We were always with relatives. Right? Yeah, we used we used to go to the beach with eggplant parmesan sandwiches, and of course you, you did. You, you'd look over at the next blanket, and they'd be peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> yeah, what was that? You know, I felt so bad. They were like food deprived. I felt really bad for my. Well, anyway, so um, it was really interesting. And, and then I have to tell you, in May of 1993, I woke up, I got dressed, and I went down to the St. Paul courthouse. And I changed my name back to Ben and Kaza. Hmm. I, I woke up. It was like I was a woman possessed. I couldn't do any. I didn't even have breakfast. I just went straight down there. When I was done, I came back and I called my dad in Michigan. I said, Dad, you're not going to believe what I just did. And he very sotto voce said, you changed your name. Now, I had never discussed this with any human being. I just felt it on my heart. Hmm. Wow. But the guy knew. But he also gave me the confidence and the way they raised me to be financially okay that I had the choice to do that. So what did they change their name to? What, what, he, what, what? he changed it to Benning because he was at Fort oh. Benning training with the Canadian paratroopers. Oh, wow. So, oh. <laughs> so they thought, huh. Uh, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's funny. Well, I think people did what they had to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, we, you know, we, you know, we are from New York, so he's, there was no name changing. And our names didn't get changed even at Ellis Island, at Sorrentino wow. and Nicoletti. So, you know, uh, that was that was kind of that was kind of simple. Um, so, so what? I mean, what kind of amazing? Did you find anything really amazing either through this or through your DNA or? You know? Oh my God! I whoa, that's a whole conversation. Um, the first thing I want to say about the DNA, before I go to that, I remember I was, what, 21, when we stepped off the plane in Rome, the second I touched that earth, I felt a buzz. Now, I'm 20, mm. right? And I wasn't into anything about ANSA. I, you know, just where are we going to eat? What are we going to do? But when I touched that soil, I felt, I felt like I was home. And when I looked around... Everybody looked like cousins, Bob. Yeah, I know. I it know. was amazing. I know the feeling. Yeah. So, yes, I've done the DNA. Uh, I did Ancestry. I did 23andMe, GEDmatch, and my heritage. And uh, basically, I'm 96% Southern Italian and 4% from the Levant. So I'm a daughter of the yeah. Mediterranean, quite yeah, frankly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but um, I think in doing genealogies, that's where it gets really interesting because they're not just paper and records of here and there. They're people. They had lives. And um, if I could go back to the book my grandfather carried with him, uh, the book of love poems that got burned. The story was in Canada when Mussolini declared uh, war and joined the, ally, uh, the, the, the Germans, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, within an hour, were banging on doors of Italians. And yeah. my, my grandfather, with his one arm, took the book, and he went to a wood-burning stove, and he threw it in the stove, and he closed wow. it. Because they were looking for things that would make you suspicious or that you were too connected yeah. to Italy. And so when they left, he pulled the book out, and that's why it got burned. And so it's a history. Again, I had no, I didn't know what Canada did with the Italians. And it was, it was kind of a dark time for Italians in, in, the, in Canada. And so I never would have known that had I not started doing this research and finding out about these people.
Well, you know, and, and we just, I don't know if you've been watching it, the Stanley Tucci show. Um, no, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, it's fantastic. He's okay. done, oh, you have to watch. He's, it just, he's in the second season now. He's going through Italy and, and doing a tour of, of uh, each region and the food and everything. Oh. But the last one he was in, in London, and I had no idea. He said there's 500,000 Italians in London now. I had no idea yeah. there was that many. Um, and um, they did the same thing. They did the same thing over there. You know, yep. there were streets that, you know, they and he showed the, the videos of them taking the Italian names off and yep. and all of that kind of stuff. Yep. And, um, you know, we know here in America what happened. My yes. my grandparents were, were had the card. I have their cards yeah, with their photo too. on it, you know. Yep. Uh, and uh, and it's quite shocking. And, and again, like I said, my four of my uncles, you know, served in the military, you know. Yep. And, um but yeah, it was, it, I didn't know about Canada and I just learned about England. I didn't realize yep. that they were all doing the same thing. And in, in, uh, in Britain, they were nicknamed the Britallians. Oh, and really? That, yeah. that was disparaging that they were called that. That was not good. So yeah, yeah these countries dealt with Italians uh, wartime. And again, that's part of our, who we are. Yeah. And you know, yeah. going back to the DNA, the, the ancient Romans always had busts and death masks of their ancestors. So when you went into their atrium or their house, you'd walk through a row of their ancestors. And I kept thinking about that and I thought, wow, modern day death masks and statues for us is Ancestry.com. That's our modern day equivalent. We can't take their busts, but somehow we live with an awareness of these people. And they're encoded in us, their, yeah. their joys, their sorrows, what they did. I mean, I think about that a lot. In fact, as an artist, I feel that my work has been guided by them. I absolutely yeah, feel that. I, no, I, yeah, no, I, I, I would think so. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's funny. We just, I just started up a, a little thing. We're kind of trying it out with uh, doing research in Italy. I have a friend who moved there. She moved oh. there permanently. My fifth grade girlfriend. Ah. Uh, from grammar school and um so you know we're going to start doing re some research and stuff but she has a friend who's a graphologist oh. now you know some people say it's a pseudoscience some say it's nonsense i kind of fascinated by it but she um i sent her my third great grandfather's signature uh count giacomo yeah uh and she you know she did a personality trait on him which of course i I didn't know him, so I couldn't yeah. opine on whether it was right or wrong. Um, but then I sent her um, the a, a little card that my grandmother had sent to my cousin uh, and has her signature on it. And um, I, I would have to say she was like 90% spot on with what my grandmother's personality was. Really? Yeah, yeah. It was very interesting. Interesting, yes. Um, so, you know, I, like I've, I've been trying to tell people that whether you believe it or not, and, and the funny thing in Europe, they're big on that kind of stuff. They're yeah. big on graphology yeah. in Europe. Here, yeah. not so much. Um, but I said, it is interesting. It is an interesting yeah. kind of thing to have send somebody a signature or, that was, or a letter that they wrote yep. and have somebody come back and say, this is, this is what they were like. So, um, but the, um, you know, I'm lucky in that on some sides of the family, uh, at least my father's family, they were all literate. Mm -hmm. My my great grandfather uh, on my my paternal side, he was uh, he was an attorney. Oh uh, my gosh! And his father before him was a, a pharmacist. Um, educated. Then, yeah, wow. yeah. Though they were educated, so we have signatures. My my mother's family, you know, my grandmother's got an X. <laughs> yep, a lot of them did that. Yep, yep. Um, and the, on her alien card. There's the X and my my uh, my mother's sister signed for her huh. because my what? mother's sister by that time was probably in her boy she was probably late twenties early thirties or something like that. It's interesting on the literacy. I don't know why my grandfather was literate. That he had had books of poetry, uh, which is so out of character for the region when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, that was very, yeah. And then yeah. my cousin found letters from him to his uh, oldest daughter, my Aunt Teresa Teresina, uh, a Todili recipe. 
and he he wrote it out and so and his writing was beautiful I mean, the script was just gorgeous but my grandmother did the x we'll be right back experience italy like never before traveling with a scheduled group or create your own bespoke tour with friends with philitaly.com pack your bags and follow phil that's www.philitaly.co. Yeah. When I look back at the records, I, I'm going, you know, I go through the pages to get to my, one of my ancestors and, and everybody's writing real nice. And then when I get to my, one of my grandparents or great grandparents, <laughs> the guy writes like me and I can't be <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. Uh, it's really hit or miss with those things. You, know, you get some people beautiful, beautiful penmanship, yep. and then you get the scribble. Um, so, so I, I asked before, and we kind of we kind of went into DNA. What did you find? Like anything really, really exciting that you that you didn't know when you were going back in time? I just think that their stories. It was their stories um, on a on a personal level. Uh, like for example, when my grandmother uh, Gaetana Moro Benincasa was back in Italy. Uh, their firstborn, Bruno, she had him when her husband was in Canada. And I found on the record, it said, uh, birth of baby boy uh, witnessed by so-and-so because the father is at work. Mm. And then six years later, uh, the little boy died. Little Bruno died. And again, the death certificate said that her husband was in Canada. So I thought about it. You know, this woman gives birth for the first time. Her husband's far away. And then to bury a son by yourself. I mean, with the yeah, other children. Yeah. I mean, that was that was really um, poignant to me that, that so much happened. So when I, I wondered, when she left Italy, did she feel like she was leaving little Bruno behind? And how many women did that? That... They had to say, I'm sorry, I, I love you from my mother, son, heart. I have to leave you here, but I love you and I need to go. So it was those kinds of discoveries, these little stories I found when I was researching people that, wow, it just seemed to color them in. So when I did the genealogy, Bob, okay, I'm an artist, so I prefer paint to words, okay, quite frankly, because words you got, you know, they have their own thing, but paint, you can do anything anything. So I ended up painting their paintings. I painted my grandfather and I painted my grandmother. And for the paintings, I used their records, immigration records, birth certificates as the background. And I painted oh, their nice. paintings on top of it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then I took objects from their life and put it in and built it into the paintings. So my grandfather with his pocket watch uh, his military records are framed in the painting. And then I have a lewd hanging down, L-O-O-D. I found in the records he was a lewdy man. Now, what the hell is a lewdy man? So here's this. A lewd is like a carpenter's plumb bob oh, right. that you hang. Yeah. But a lewd, a nautical lewd, is used since he was working on the canals when they had to go through the uh, the bridges. He would, they would stand at the highest point on the on the deck and drop the lewd down to see if they'd clear the bridge. Oh, right. <laughs> so he was a lewdy man, but I couldn't tell if he did that after he lost his arm and if they hired him to do that. So uh, I put a nautical lewd in the painting. And then for my grandmother's painting, I put all of her records, but she, like many Italian women, they did that beautiful crochet. Yeah, yeah, my grandmother used to do it. Yeah. Okay, my cousin Helen Selfie Gorday gave me her, she mailed to me from Canada her crocheted pieces. I put them in the painting, and I put her black rosary beads mm. in the painting. So she's sitting there holding her rosary, and the her crochet work is right there with her. And... How can you make a flat painting of dimensional people? They were real, Bob. So I thought, if they're real, I got to put real things in the painting. So, so that's, that's cool. how. Yeah. So that's what happens when an artist does genealogy. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, that's really that's really a, a cool idea. Andy Andy Warholish, probably. <laughs> right? 
Um, yeah, that's that's really a, that's really a neat kind of way of doing it and, and looking at it. Um, you know that, and that's the thing too that that um, you know if you if you find something, um, you know even even certain records that are outside of just the normal birth and death type of yes. things. Yes, I, I was with the help of uh, Family Search. I was able to, well, they came across um, the will of uh, my, let's see, fifth, I think it was my fifth great grand uncle. But he left everything um, to my fourth great grandmother okay. because all the men were dead. Ah, okay. He was the last one left. He, he, had, no, he had no children. Uh, his two brothers died before him, and he said in this will that he 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 did not want to leave anything to anybody who was not named Dorisa. Okay. So he had to leave it to the girl. <laughs> yep. Well, that was and, yeah. Yeah, which is that was a big deal. That was a very very big deal, um, and within this this this. Part of this whole thing was not just the will, but also uh, what it showed was how he thought. Yes. Right? That was yes. one part of it. The other part of it was he left money to the church um, in perpetuity. Really? That so much, he, he wanted so much money to go to this church forever. Huh. You know, so little things like that. And eventually yep. what happened was uh, someone along the line, and I forget exactly who, had a male heir, and this male heir uh, fought the will. I was going to say, contested it. He, yeah, he tried to get the money back, uh, which wound up getting all lost after Napoleon attacked Italy, and, yep. and um, you know, this, this at least this family lost lost everything. Um, but you know, you, like I said, you get an insight into how this man thought. Yes. In, 1630 or whatever it was, 1670, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I have, um, I have a, a, a few things, um, if, you know, a few different Facebook groups that, that I have and that and I belong to a lot of ones. But one of them uh, is uh, they, they do noble family type of things. And mm. uh, they, had this, they had this party, I think it was in Florence. I think they have it every year where they dress like the people from oh, the 1700s. Cool. And I said, I'd give anything to be able to do that. I, yeah. And, you know, and the costumes are just outrageous, you know. Well, yeah. And they have it at a big castle and all of that kind of stuff. Oh. And, you know, and, um, you know I, 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 even my wife says it. Wouldn't it be great to maybe not go back and live in that time, but to be able to look down on how these people yes. are living. Yeah. You know, I've often wondered that. Sometimes when I go to bed at night, I talk to my ancestors. Sometimes I say, let me see where you lived. Even yeah. if I don't remember it in the morning, take me there. I want to see what you guys did. How did you think? What were you doing? What was your yeah. life like? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I know, um, you know, my, my great grandfather, the one who took care of my uncle, um, he, he owned a, uh, a cow or two. Um, oh. And he was the village milkman. He would, and and we have my my cousin was smart enough to interview my uncle in Bares before he passed away, and uh, you know my uncle says he used to walk through the town with his grandfather, mm -hmm. and they would stop at the house, and he'd milk the cow, <laughs> and he was the the village milkman. Well, there you have it. <laughs> My dad used to talk about being on a little donkey and his mother would take him to the countryside, which is really what Mangon was very country, uh, to pick up uh, wood, you mm. know, twigs for, for fire. He actually remembers sitting on a donkey doing that. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, we're so close in terms of age to that connection. We're not that far removed, Bob. No, 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 we're not. We're not. Um, and, you know, I felt the same way you did. You know, we only made one trip to Italy. You know, we're going next Wednesday. Finally. Wonderful. It's two years. We had to cancel it twice because yeah. of COVID. Yeah. Um, but I remember we were in, um, um, 
we had we were in Sorrento, and um, I don't know if it was. I think it was there. We were going to a, um, I guess an outdoor market or something like that, mm -hmm. and we were walking through this street, and uh, I looked in, and here was this woman. My grandmother, my mother's mother, was a big woman, uh, and, and I look in, and here's this woman with white hair, uh, big woman. And the whole yard is filled with tomatoes. Oh, yes. And she's sitting there with a big smile on her face, peeling tomatoes. And I, and I, I said, to her, I said that, that could be my grandmother. That could have been my grandmother, <laughs> my great-grandmother sitting there. Yeah. You know? And these are the things, you know, I don't know if everybody gets it, especially the younger people. Uh, their life was so simple, but yet so full. You know yes. what I mean? Yes, I do. I do. And then growing up in the 50s in you know, an Italian American household. Yeah. I think um oh my god, it was like understood that day or night anybody could come to the house. Yeah. <laughs> Just day or night, okay? And then not only could they come day or night, and they did late at night, the table was covered. I mean covered in food. And I always thought that was like normal. That's what people did. But that was a way, you know, the cousins did the birthdays. We hung out together. We were in school together. And if I could, Bob, um, I did write their stories. There's one little passage about that. I'd just like to share with you if I could. Sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah absolutely. Here we go. It was doorbell opera at its finest. Choreographed personality speaking in animated dialect or rapid fire broken English. Heads would nod and faces contort to a chorus of laughter or gasps of shocked dismay. As a little kid, I thought those moments were no big deal because they would last forever. Yeah, yeah, that's, that, that says it. it. Yeah, no, that's the doorbell that's... operas. Perfect. Morning, noon, or night. When that doorbell rang, it was like the curtains opened. <laughs> And there it was. And I really did think it was going to last forever. Yeah, you know, I, I think about, and, and I wrote a little thing about my, you know, being in my grandmother's kitchen. It was actually, my grandmother lived with my aunt and uncle. Um, but, you know, sometimes I'll be frying like eggplant or something like that. Yeah. Now we have the air conditioner going and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Well, they would sit, they would not sit, stand there for hours frying eggplant. Yeah. In the heat, you know, summertime, yeah. 90 degrees outside. Like it was, and the food that will come out of this oh. four burner kitchen yes. for 50, 60, 70 people. Yes. I look back and I say, how did they do this? Yes. Yes. And I think you said it earlier the younger uh, generations, uh, our children and their children, I don't think that moment can ever be recaptured of the no. way we grew up. And to me, as I get older, it gets more and more precious. Yeah. And you know, we're trying. I'm, I'm, I'm working with um, uh, a couple of a couple of people. Um, you know, one of them is uh, he's he's an actor, and uh, and uh, another guy uh, to try and come up with you know maybe a twenty five or thirty minute movie mm. um, to connect people back. So you know, you know, interview. Uh, People from Corona, where I grew up, yep. people from Boston's North End, uh, Chicago, you know, uh, and tie that back to Italy so that the, the kids could understand. And, yes. And, you know, one of the things that they said, you know, you know, the younger kids, if you brought them to Italy and brought them to uh, a cemetery or something, they'd be shaking their heads like, why am I here? But, you yeah. know, somebody, somebody made up, you know, came up with a good point and said, Bring them to a discotheque. Bring them to a club where they'll meet Italians of their age. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that they could connect with them and then start to understand the yeah. difference, yeah. you know, and why we need to be tied back to them. Because, you know, one thing that scares me and, and some of the other people is we're going to lose all of that. Very soon, if some of us don't do something yep. about it, we're going yep. to lose it all. In, in a way, I, I feel that as an artist, I was compelled to paint their stories for that reason. Mm -hmm. And I wrote their stories out, the discoveries I made, because somewhere in the universe, I want it there. 
and I shared it with the family and I shared it with all the relatives. It has to be documented. Their lives mattered. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Their lives mattered. And not just to us. It's, you know, when I think about it, um, what I realized, the discoveries, if you ask me, like, what did I discover in that genealogy? I am the daughter of immigrants. And I did this painting. Um, I did the paintings of these two people, these Southern Italian people, for a reason. And that reason is identity. I know who I am and I know what I'm from. Mm -hmm. Not a lot yeah. of people can say that. And we who have that, that Italian, Italy's encoded in us. I Right, we're italian American, so we're living in some kind of fictional idea of what the relatives yeah, presented right. to us. That's the Italy we inhabit until yeah. we go there. But we are still encoded with that country. We're imprinted with it. That, that, that will never change. So you're yeah. right, getting those stories out. Uh, someone, get, I, I was cleaning my house. I found a... a, a a, someone took a V8, uh, with that old fashioned uh, camera work, and they put it on a on a CD, and they sent it to me. It was my family from 1957 to 1964, all the relatives, birthday parties, weddings, hanging out. So I took it because I'm I'm an artist. I do digital work. I cleaned it up, audio, and I posted it for my relatives. I sent it to everybody. And oh my God, I was getting phone calls with tears. Patty, I can't believe it. It's like we're there again. I showed it to my kids so they knew what it was like to grow up this way. Um, you know, yeah, other... I, have, I, have, I have some of that too. Um, uh, my father was a photographer for the New York Daily News for Whoa, 40 really? years. Whoa, really? Yeah, uh, from like 1946 through 1982 or three or something like that. Um, but... In that space for a couple of years, he did newsreels for WPIX, oh. and he I have 16 millimeter uh, film and some eight millimeter. Uh, wow! But when they went to Canada, for example, to see my uncle, they have uh, there's probably about it's probably I'll send it to you. It's probably about eight or nine minutes. They did a fake shotgun wedding in Canada, <laughs> yeah. Where my cousin, my one of my older cousins, was the bride. Uh, and there's, you know, the, and they use the scarecrow as the groom. Oh it's, no! You, you'll love it. Uh, uh, oh, uh, send uh, it to me. Uh, and there's a, there's another one that was my mother's favorite. She would laugh. Just think she didn't even have to see it. You just talk about it. They were in Canada, uh, and um, my uncle, my uncle Giovanni, is at a pump, and he's pumping water. And yeah. as he's pumping the water, it's flooding the ground, and you can see his pants starting to get wet and wet and wet. <laughs> and you know, like I said, their lives were simple, but they yeah. had so much fun. Yeah. You know? Uh, and I, my grandmother, when my uncle came, um, he had never met his brothers or sisters. And Whoa. I hadn't seen his parents for 35 years. Wow. So. Whoa. Crazy, right? It is. But you know, you bring up a good point, Bob. I think for those of us around the same age, I'm not going to date myself here, but those of us around the same age, I would, I would urge people to write your stories and make yeah. sure your kids have it. And if you have photographs and you know who's who on the back, for God's sake, write it. But now is the time to make sure we, we share this. It's never too late. We have to share how we were yeah. raised, what it meant, so that, uh, you know, whether those kids get it or not, when they get older, they're going to want this. Right. And that's why we're trying to put together that, that, that little short documentary. Um, yes. You know, to, to, to capture some of that kind of stuff. And, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to, you know, to do something a little unique. But I'll, you know, when we get a little bit further down, um, I'll let you know what's going on. Because as I an artist, you, you might be interested in, in, in seeing that and, and I taking would. part of it. Uh, Michael keeps telling me I need to write a script. I said, Michael, I'm not a, I'm not a script writer. <laughs> well, or but he did a great, he did his, it's Michael Cavalieri and he did uh, a thing um, uh, um, going back to his town, Limina in Sicily. Um, and uh, so we're trying, we'll, we'll, we'll see where it goes, but. You'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he said. Don't yep. worry. He yeah. said, he said the main thing he says, you need to capture your passion. He said, the other stuff is 
the other stuff's easy. He says, you, you know, you don't have to be a script writer. We, no. I need to capture your passion. So Passion uh, first, everything follows. That, that's, that's, yeah. At least as an artist, I can say that, honestly. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what, he's, that's what he's telling me. That's what he's trying to. And uh, the funny thing about him, we met through somebody, the person who's doing my tour, Letizia Sinisi, who did my tour. And I had seen Michael before, and I tried to contact him, and, and nothing happened. And then she mentioned him. Okay. So um, I said, I've been trying to reach you. And you didn't answer. He gave me his phone number. Okay. Anyway, I grew up in College Point in Queens, New York. Uh, he grew up, he's, he's younger than me. Uh, he's, I guess, 20 years difference or something like that. Um, he grew up in Whitestone, the next town over. Okay. Boy. And I was born in Whitestone. So I said to him, I said, Michael, do you know this? Yeah, oh yeah, I know this. Oh, yeah. You know, and so we, it was, you know, I don't believe in accidents. Oh, I don't either. No, it's, it, we're meant to intersect. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yes, um, I would agree with that. Uh, so, yeah, so it was really, it was really great. I said, you, do you know the butcher shop? Yes, I used to go there with my father. And I said, I used to go there with my father. Oh, my um, God. Well, listen, Pat, this has been fun. Really, really great fun. I enjoyed this immensely. Um, I did, too. Thank you so much, Bob. This was wonderful. Oh, thanks. And, um... If you have a, you know, if, it's a, if you have a website or anything or with things with your art, just send it, me that so I'll include it all in the post and everything Which like I'll that. send it to you because uh, yeah. I have a section called My Calabria with the paintings and their stories. So I would love to send that to you. Oh, no, that'd be great. And I'll put it all in the blog so everybody else could see it. Okay. Uh, and, and first of all, bon viaggio. Have a great trip. Oh, <laughs> Thanks I'm a just, lot. Oh, that's going to be fantastic. Enjoy. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.